overlook of the cottonwoods, or as I often refer to them, aspens, being that normally I'm a high elevation mule deer hunter. Mixed in with these cottonwoods are little open areas and old hay fields, along with a lot of naturally grown manzanita brush. The manzanitas the mule deer just love to bed down in, and when they have to, and the manzanitas have new leaf growth, They'll, they'll eat the manzanita leaves and twigs as well. But here you can see we're coming up on the agriculture fields. These are privately leased and operated, so you cannot hunt nor can you access these alfalfa fields, but they provide fantastic forage for the mule deer. The cottonwoods and manzanitas provide excellent bedding cover, and in between you can often see channels of water whether it be sloughs like this or little irrigation canals. Here I spotted a couple does and a three-point buck and one side of this buck is broken off so he's been out there fighting. Of course the coyotes are starting to go off but the buck is intently looking across the field at a very large group of does. It's a very large group of does and fawns. I only captured about half of them within the video frame. But they're just meandering along. They're getting a little spooky because the wind's on the back of my neck. I had spotted a nice 4x4 buck with eye guards in the upper 170 class. So that kind of meets my minimum buck that I'm looking for and I took and circumvented the field to the back side of this cottonwood uh, patch of woods. And I'm trying to work my way through here but the leaves are very dry and very crackly so it's very noisy to sneak through here. Well, <clears throat> I must be in the right aspen patch because looking up here There's the fifth tree stand I've come across. And that's a nice one there. I've got one like that. That's a lone wolf alpha fixed stand. It's a good stand. It's in a good location. No one's sitting in it though at 10 o'clock in the morning. Working through the back side you can see the deer here out toward the center. It's moving from left to right. It's a, uh, this is a doe, very large doe. There she is. But she keeps looking behind her, as well as looking at me. So my plan is starting to come together here. I've been able to intercept those deer coming off the field and moving into the woods. But that doe definitely knew I was here. There in the distance there, there's a nice buck. I ranged him, he's at 155 yards, kind of looking at me. I've tried to enlarge the video here as the GoPro just does not have a zoom feature unlike my other video camcorder which I did not bring with me on this, on this day. So the buck is watching the doe. He's not too much looking my way, he's mostly watching the doe and where she's going. So I'm going to try to plant a stock on this buck. He's a pretty decent buck, 4x4, scoring the high 170s. 
So I'm going to set down my tripod and my camera, see if I can capture some of this stock on film. When the camera and tripod in place, I circle around, checking my wind, the wind's in my face. I've got the sun towards my back left side. And one hunting tip here, when you're stalking in through the woods, not only do you have to be as quiet as you can, but you just saw my shadow move through that patch of sunlight. I'm trying to stay within the shadows. And that's a big key when you're stalking woodland deer. Try to move in the shadows. Here I'm going to pause because I am in the shadow. But now you can see my shadow move into the sunlight. I'm moving when the deer have turned their heads and looking the other way. And now I'm in this nice, nice shadowy area. The deer are just on the other side of those dark trees there, about 70 yards away. The 4x4 is broadside looking at me, so I draw back. But unfortunately, that sapling's branches are all in the way of my shot. He turns to leave, so I let down the bow, and wow, letting down the 72 pound draw is not easy as I keep getting older. So I circle around that sapling so I might get a clear shot, and I spot the buck again. He's quartering away, but it's an easy quarter, not a hard quartering away shot. Did a quick range here. We got 55 yards, and he moved. He's behind some trees. The camera didn't capture him because he's off to my right a little bit. I try to draw again. And again, the buck and the doe move. But this time the doe did the old pogo stick, so those deer are pretty much gone. So rather than push that buck into the next county, I decide to back on out of this stock and try again later in the afternoon or perhaps the next day. Notice again how I'm continuing to stay in the shadows. And that's much what the deer do as well. The deer earlier in the video, they were moving through all the shadow areas. So just a little hunting tip for you all. Occasionally, working the edges of the aspens here next to the alfalfa fields. Once in a while, you come across these tree stands. So the local guys are setting tree stands here. I have two lone wolf platform fixed stands such as that one up there. That's not a lone wolf though. That's a cheaper stand. But uh, I prefer to use the saddle and the one stick method. And that way, if I find a good tree that's relatively clear branches, I can get up and down in just a matter of minutes. But uh, someone's got a set right here with a tree stand along this edge. Hunting Arizona over-the-counter archery mule deer in January. So I'm working down this farm road here along the edges of this alfalfa field and this aspen oak patch. Just checking for signs, tracks, and deer trails in and out. But in the evening and the mornings, a lot of deer use these alfalfa fields for feed. And 
It's been a good morning so far. I was up in my tree stand back in the aspen grove and <clears throat> saw a limping three-point buck at about 25 yards. He was with a few does. Then I heard a lot of grunting and scraping behind me through the trees where I couldn't see. And I think that grunting and scraping was probably a bigger buck, but he, he just never came out even though I grunted back at him. So we'll see. Only got about five days left in this hunt. Mav Hunter out.